My name is Jean Bene Ramsey and I'm five and a half. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. This is episode 9 in the ongoing Khan's Order series. We're approximately halfway through the 20 episode series. This episode, although it's titled Detective Smith is widely considered to be an expert investigator, it really covers, I think, the intruder theory in more general. Before we get to today's episode, thank you to those who took part in yesterday's live. I think it was quite a good episode, quite interesting. Thank you for those who um, made contributions, who supported uh, the channel. Thank you very much. And thank you also to a couple of you who went from there and signed up to Patreon. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. You can click on the light blue icon on the bottom right of the screen like share leave a comment if you do share please use the hashtag tcrs that's whether it's on facebook or twitter and let's get started so we're kicking off on the bottom of page 26 bear in mind the entire reports 93 pages so we are around about a third of the way through the Khan's order although we approximately halfway through the series and it deals with, and I'm quoting now from the, the order, quote, In March 1997, Andrew Louis Smith was hired by the Boulder District Attorney's Office due to his extensive experience as a homicide investigator for 30 years, end quote. Now, just that little snippet of information is quite interesting. The fact that Detective Louis Smith came onto the scene in March 1997, right? Now, bear in mind, by then, it was almost a cold case already. The crime had happened in December, you know, the end of December, Christmas, the day after Christmas, and the entire month of January had gone by, then the entire month of February had gone by, and of course, then Lou Smith comes onto the scene and he starts making imaginative... Um, assessments about well there was no snow and things like that by the way I've actually heard a journalist saying the same thing there's actually a very prominent journalist saying he doesn't know where the snow narrative comes from blah 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 what I find crazy about that is so you have Lou Smith talking about this no snow thing and I guess this journalist as well and then you have these photos backing up what they're saying so they say well, there was no snow, and then you see the photos of the walkways and whatever, and there's, there's not, in, in those particular photos, there's not any snow in sight. And so you can kind of do cartwheels and do a couple of circus acts and throw your pom-poms around, well done, well, you, you just um, conjured something, something out of the crime scene, something that wasn't in the crime scene, you've now conjured back into being. The thing that doesn't make any sense with that is there is a crime scene photo taken of the the grill that Lou Smith always wants to walk around. The the, the grill that Lou Smith has done numerous um, demonstrations around. There's a photo of that. There's also a video of that. And that grill is surrounded by snow. So my question is, did the snow, was, was it a case that on Christmas, the day after Christmas, there was no snow whatsoever, and then suddenly snow appeared later on. Is that is that what's actually going on here? Is that actually what's going on? Because um, if you go and look at the weather reports, it was actually a very, very cold Christmas night. Very cold. And I think that is part of why the crime happened, by the way. Trace snow also fell. So the whole thing is, is um, part of the craziness of the Ramsey case is you can almost throw up the information almost as though they're dominoes throw them up into the air and then pick and choose whatever story you want to tell and if you get enough people to follow what you're saying well then that becomes reality it's just not reality it is very frustrating for me because the case could have been solved based on the no snow thing I don't mean solved as in You would have known everything that happened, but you could certainly have excluded a lot of wasteful 
resources, a lot of wasteful time and activity. Of course, now what is taking the place of the no snow is the whole DNA thing. Anyway, I'm getting carried away. Um, going back to page 27, she talks about um, Steve Thomas inside the Ramsey murder investigation, quoting from his book, um, that, um, that he was actually, in other words, she's citing Steve Thomas talking about um, Detective Smith's experience, which I find quite ironic. Then, during the course of his tenure with the police department, Smith became familiar with all aspects of the murder investigation. I think, to be accurate, Detective Smith became very familiar with the Ramses as well. Um, he um, was so familiar with them that when he died, John Ramsey visited him in hospital. And, you know, um, you talk about... Um, crossing certain lines of whatever you want to call it, attorney prior, uh, attorney client privilege. Um, I know it's not the same, but there should be a line, if you are an investigator, there should be a line where you don't become too familiar with the suspects that you should be investigating. Um, and uh, I think it is interesting, th the, the kind of person Lou Smith was, that, that was recruited by Hunter. He was a Christian and the Ramses were ostensibly Christians as well. And so they had a huge amount to get along with. They prayed together. Uh, Lou Smith would start off his, his investigative day praying. And of course, the inspiration would, would uh, lead him the way that, that he was led. And some might, be, might say was misled. Um, it goes on to say, uh, he resigned from the investigation at some point in September 1998 because he felt that the Boulder Police Department refused to investigate leads that pointed to an intruder as the murder of John Bonet instead of insisting on ins instead insisted on focusing only on the defendants as the culprits wow wow incredible how the Ramses were the absolute victims here they were it was only the Ramses that were investigated what is not mentioned in the Khan's order is that Steve Thomas actually quit before Lou Smith and um, wrote an eight page, um, was it eight, eight or nine pages uh, report? And that's just not mentioned here. So poor Lou Smith um, had a horrible time against um, all these terrible things. And anyway, ult don't worry, ultimately the grand jury um, had his back and the grand jury actually um, proved that Lou was right all along, didn't they? There's another thing in the Khan's report referring to two other men, Detective Steve Ainsworth, who you don't really mu hear much about, and Assistant District Attorney Tripp DeMuth. DeMuth also believed the evidence pointed towards an intruder, but he was soon removed from the investigation. Oh, wow, so that's incredible. So Tripp DeMuth believed that there was an intruder but, and so he was just taken off the investigation. Wow, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, actually, if you go and go through the, the history of this case, DeMuth, as far as I'm aware, was actually a prosecutor who then became, um, I don't know if he became a defense attorney or a defense lawyer, whether he was hired by Hal Haddon, I'm not quite sure. We do know on August the 12th, 2000, Prosecutor Tripp DeMuth resigned, and this was four days after losing a primary election bid to become Boulder County's next district attorney, and we know who that went to. It went to Mary Lacey. So Tripp DeMuth was really trying to become the next district attorney, and I don't know, what you, you might say it was politics, you might say it was intuition, but perhaps if you wanted to get somewhere in Boulder, you needed to toe the line with the current district attorney. And uh, didn't that mean you needed to um, subscribe to the intruder theory? So just to correct what I said earlier, in September 2000, DeMuth left the district attorney's office and he started working for Michael Bynum who was basically John Ramsey's lawyer, John Ramsey's business lawyer. So you could say in an indirect way, I'm not saying that 
Trip DeMuth worked for Team Ramsey, but just that you had the prosecutor on the Ramsey case then literally joining the one of the closest um, lawyers that John Ramsey had, joining his group or his team. Um, that's not mentioned in the Khan's order either. What's also not mentioned is DeMuth was known to work very closely with, Lee, uh, with Lou Smith. So while the Boulder police didn't really um, agree with most, if not, well, much, if not most of what Lou Smith said, um, you had folks or fellows like DeMuth who sort of um, entertained uh, Lou Smith, uh, had his ear, so to speak. I think you've also got to bear in mind that you, and it's probably difficult to argue this one way or the other, but you've got uh, Trip DeMuth and Lou Smith interviewing Patsy Ramsey, and both of them actually subscribe to the intruder theory. So you've got a someone who's perhaps already made up their mind what they think happened, and it's their job to interview Patsy. How, how hard are they going to make it, um, you know, the questions that they are asking? Are they going to be asking things that are beyond the intruder theory, right? Based on the wiki site, and I'll put a link to it, DeMuth and Steve Ainsworth were apparently the subject of a state investigation into material from the Boulder Police computer system uh, relating to the investigation that was apparently stolen. Uh, I'm trying to find um, a news report about that. I can't. I can't find anything beyond the wiki site, so you should maybe go and check that up on your own time. Oh, I've actually found the article. It's from the Daily Times call. It's from 2001, so a year after joining Mike Bynum, um, a prosecutor was investigated for missing Ramsey files. This is from the 4th of uh, January, February, March, April, May 2001. Nearly four years ago, former Boulder County Prosecutor Trip DeMuth and Steve Ainsworth were the subject of a state investigation for allegedly stealing information from a war room computer regarding the John Bonnet Ramsey murder. Um, this week, DeMuth and Ainsworth appeared on NBC's Today show with investigator Lou Smith, who is advocating that an intruder beat and strangled. Uh, six-year-old John Bonnet. So as late as this point, you have DeMuth actually appearing on television with Lou Smith. Anyway, it refers here to both incidents seem to illustrate the lack of cooperation and different theories of the different law enforcement officials. This is quoting from the article in the Daily Times call. The article goes on to say, in June, Boulder police became alarmed after someone apparently gained access to a computer containing investigative material. The computer was located in a war room. It was a $35,000 project designed to keep information in the John Bonnet Ramsey murder investigation secret. And um, so it seems like this information from the Boulder police was, was, um, was accessed by someone else. So in that same month, in early June, Colorado Bureau of Investigation investigators visited DeMuth's home to seize his computer, also Ainsworth's home to seize his computer. But apparently the issue was put to rest when a week after the supposed break-in, investigators concluded the files hadn't been broken into, but a, co a computer malfunction made it look as though they had. And so you had... Alex Hunter saying afterwards that the whole thing was ridiculous, that he looked at him and said, you've got a screw loose. I would really like to know from, say, Kola or Steve Thomas what they make of that whole thing, because obviously this whole thing led to a CBI investigation. So is the break in a hoax, like the no snow, or is it something that did happen but it was just called a computer malfunction afterwards. You had Alex Hunter coming to the rescue of Trip to Muth saying, wow, for the CBI to go to Trip's home in front of his little girls, take his computer, it was the height of the personality conflict issue. So I will put a link to this article in the description as well. It's worth reading. 
I think what is also not mentioned in the Khan's order is who removed DeMuth from the investigation. It was actually Governor Roy Roma who said we need to put new blood into the investigation. Just think about what we're talking about. We're talking about um, in 1998... Where, with nothing happening, no uh, Boulder grand jury or anything like that really taking place. You had other people in Colorado trying to get the case to move ahead. And so this is what they basically did. And unfortunately they failed, but can you fault them for trying? At the time you had Alex Hunter saying, well, you know, we removed them because they had lost some of the objectivity. I think that's quite an interesting thing to say, given what uh, Kahn's is saying. It's almost like Kahn's is saying these were uh, good prosecutors, good investigators. I'm not saying they weren't, but in terms of the Ramsey case, um, hadn't they lost the objectivity? She's citing them in a way to say that, well, you know, these prosecutors were removed um, who believed the evidence that pointed to the intruder, and this evidence makes sense. And so this shows obvious bias and that the Ramses were victims. The article goes on to say that DeMuth now works as a civil litigation attorney for a Boulder law firm and that he's still showing support for Smith. And so in this article he said he was and is the most experienced person who worked on this case and um, so on. At the bottom of the same article it refers to I think it's DeMuth saying the reasons why we weren't allowed to investigate any of the other things that came up. I don't have the answer for that, he says. That's kind of a mystery to me because they investigated people like Chris Wolfe, um, John Mark Carr, Santa Claus. And we're going to hear about those silly sidetracking investigators, uh, investigations in the next episode. In the Khan's order at the, I think it's the bottom of page 27 it refers to in June 1998 the Boulder police presented their evidence to the Boulder County District Attorney now obviously given what we know now uh, Judge Carnes didn't know what was presented there she knew that evidence was presented but she didn't know what was presented and I must say I find that a little questionable that you're going to refer to something that was presented almost as though you know what was presented, except you don't know what was presented, and then present that in a certain light. Then it says, at some point in the summer of 1998, then District Attorney Alex Hunter decided to convene a grand jury. So you have the Boulder Police presenting evidence, which the judge doesn't read. Then there's the secret grand jury testimony, which the judge doesn't know the answers about or the intrigue surrounding it. And then she says, and this is quite important, she says, uh, Hunter decided to convene a grand jury to investigate the murder of John Bonin and possibly bring charges. On October 13, 1999, the grand jury was discharged with no indictment issued. Wrong. Four indictments were issued or four indictments were voted on and all four weren't signed by the district attorney. So what this shows is the way a judge misinterpreted, was misled, was misinformed, misunderstood the result of the grand jury uh, trial. Now obviously at the time of the Khan's order it was not known, certainly not publicly, what the result was of the um, investigation, which was, um, you know, in the double figures in terms of months. Um, I personally believe that a lot of lawyers would have been whispering amongst themselves. So I think some members of the legal community would have, would have had some idea what was going on. I wouldn't expect everyone to know. Um, but you can see here how successfully the whole thing was, you can see how successfully it, it had an effect in other cases like, for example, this one. And it's a pity, isn't it? It's a pity that there wasn't transparency at the time. And that brings us to the very last paragraph at the bottom of page 28 before we get to publicity surrounding the crime. 
they will speak a little bit more about Detective Lou Smith versus Steve Thomas based on Khan's assessment. And again, the I, I find it quite one-sided, but, but we'll get to that. Anyway, she says, the district attorney and all other prosecutors involved in the proceedings believed at that time there was insufficient evidence to bring charges against any person, including the defendants, in connection with the murder. Um, so that's not what the grand jury felt. The grand jury felt that there was, um, there was sufficient evidence, and the grand jury did actually hear Lou Smith testifying also... Um, What's his name? FBI profiler um, John Douglas. And despite hearing that, they they went with what the Boulder police suggested to them. I must say, if you just think about this case broadly and you say, the, here is a situation where there's a six-year-old little girl and she's found dead in the way that she was found dead inside the Ramsey home, in the basement, right? And then you have a ransom note and you say, oh, at the end of all of this, there's insufficient evidence to bring any charges. It's pretty crazy. It's definitely pretty crazy. So I'm not going to take it further than that. If you want to read some of the links that I referred to, head to the description and you can verify what I've, what I've quoted from, where I've quoted from it. And otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow for episode 10 in the Khan's Order series. Bear in mind, on Patreon, we're now up to chapter 14, with about another eight chapters remaining in the Craven Silence audiobook. So you can get that for $5, as well as other audiobooks on that tier. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.